my name is Will Gibbons, and today I'm gonna to show you how to create a backlit silicone button in Keyshot. It's fully animatable and it's quite flexible. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Let's go. To download your free project files, visit willgibbons.com, click on the File Vault link, and either sign up or log in to enter the File Vault. There, you'll find links to dozens of project files and hundreds of other product viz resources. So similar to last week's video, there's gonna be a KSP file for you to download so you can follow along. Go ahead and open that up. It should look like what you see on screen right now. And the first thing we'll do is double click on the button material, open up its material graph, close your material library panel, and move things over so we can see both our product and the material graph. Next, you wanna move these nodes over and go into the project files and grab the color blocks PNG and drag that into the material graph. The first thing we need to do is get some color on our buttons. So plug this into the color channel of the diffuse material. Now go into our texture, double click it. Let's fix the mapping. Go to mapping type and choose planar. Let's move our texture and you can see it's rotated. Let's hold shift to snap to 90 and rotate that into position and then hit the green checkbox. Next, we need to change our diffuse material to something more translucent. Let's go for the translucent material. And right then things start looking pretty gummy, which is cool but they're a little too shiny. So let's go ahead and take our roughness up to somewhere around 0.2 and maybe take our specular value down just a little bit. The other thing I recommend is taking your subsurface color and making sure it's brighter than your surface color. So I like to set my subsurface to 100% for now. And I think we're looking pretty good here. Maybe we'll take our surface color to about 75. And finally, we'll turn on global illumination. And now we should have some pretty good looking gummy buttons, but we need these things to light up. So let's right click and grab a material called emissive. Plug that emissive into our root node as a label. It all turns white. Well, we need some color going into this emissive material, but we're gonna come back to that in a second. Let's just disable for now that label and let's do some quick changes to our uh, translucent color. Right click and find yourself a texture called Color Gradient. Hit C to preview, and you'll see that it's just a white to black gradient. We want this to create something circular. So we're gonna go to Spherical, and we want it to appear on every button. So we need to go to our Center On mode and choose Part. From here, if we were to say scale this down, you can see we have a little circular gradient, gradient on each button. It'll make it a little easier to see what we're doing. Uh, get out of that preview with C. I wanna plug a color adjust node into, or insert it between our texture and our translucent material. This color adjust node is going to allow us to do things like play with the saturation of our translucent material. Now, technically in the real world, these buttons would not have any color to them and all the color would come from the LED behind them, but we don't have LEDs behind this. And frankly, this material is gonna work better than embedding LEDs inside here. We wanna take our color gradient and control the saturation of these buttons with it. So if we plug this into the saturation, you'll see we get a colorful center and the edges become white. And this is going to be affected by this gradient. So we can scale it up. I'm gonna go all the way up to 40. If you're looking to take your Keyshot skills to the next level, then check out the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Inside, I share the exact process I've used and refined over the past 10 years to deliver renderings to some of today's most recognized brands. With over 15 hours of content broken into 100 plus bite-sized beginner-friendly videos, this is the most comprehensive Keyshot course available. When you enroll, you will learn how to turn a boring CAD model into beautiful photoreal images. Stop wasting time searching for tutorials on YouTube and fast track your learning by enrolling in the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Click the link in the description below to learn more and see what other customers have to say about it. And it's going to make this a much more subtle effect. However, you should see that we still have more color in the center of our button than we do on the edges. The other thing I wanna do with this color adjust is darken it, believe it or not, it's a little bit bright. So we're gonna go down to say about 0.5. 
The reason is because we're about to put a really bright light on top of these. So now that we've done this, we're gonna go and turn our emissive label back on. And again, it doesn't have any color, but let's give it the same color our buttons have. And we can do that by grabbing and connecting the color adjust to the color in the emissive. So now we have light coming out of these buttons. Click on our emissive and make it bright. Let's go to five. So now we have a nice glowing button and the light or the color is of the light is not as intense toward the edges, which is nice. It still doesn't look super realistic. And that's because our emissive material is covering all of our buttons. We're actually gonna use a gradient like this color gradient again. So hold Alt to duplicate it and plug this into the opacity of our emissive. The reason this is gonna work if we preview, again, remember white is equal to one, black is equal to zero. If we take this down to say 10 we're, and, and we have white in the middle, that's completely opaque. So all the light will show and where it's black, none of the light will show. So if we get out of this preview, you'll see the effect. So this is cool, but it's leaving us with some darker buttons or the edges just don't look so good. So bring this up to about 20. Now we're just gonna play with a couple settings. You can play with the colors of the gradient. So instead of going from pure black to white, we could go to say 20 or 30% to make that a little less extreme. You could also play with the little triangle that controls the shape of the gradient. I find that playing with this is gonna give you some of the best results. Uh, it's kind of like controlling the fall off and it's, it's going to allow us to see some of the translucency underneath that button. We could also take the white color for this gradient and make it not pure white, so maybe 95. So you're letting more of the translucent button underneath show. And you can go ahead and play with those. Another thing we wanna do is add another color adjust between the first one and our color of our emissive. This is because our light is a little too saturated, believe it or not. We want to desaturate the light coming uh, from the top because the brighter a light is, the more it desaturates. That's called a photo, like a photographic response or something like that. So let's take our saturation down a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna take mine down to about 0.7 and you can see that that adds a little bit more realism. Now from here, we can play with these color adjusts to dial things in the way we want. Uh, we could take our value maybe up of our light just a little bit, make it a little brighter. We could also go into our color adjust and play with these values. Now we're using a color gradient for the saturation, but for some reason I find myself enjoying controlling values with numbers instead of like a gradient. So I'm gonna use a color to number here. And the way this is going to work if we preview this is we're going to have uh, zero is going to be the uh, darkest parts of this gradient and one will represent the lightest parts. And so we're saying that the darkest areas are gonna have zero saturation and the brightest will have one. We can remap these values basically. So if I take this one and go to 1.2, now we're going to say that the uh, centers of these are even more colorful. And if we wanted to add some color around these edges, we could take this value, the zero, and say 0.3 maybe. And it just makes the whole thing a little bit better looking. And right there, that's, that's pretty much uh, the main first steps here. So the next thing I want to address are these black buttons. These black buttons are supposed to not have any light turned on behind them at all. So there's a cool way we can do this. We're gonna find the translucent node, hold Alt and drag down to duplicate it, disconnect it from the first color adjust. So this translucent is going to become a label into the root node. And this is basically covering everything we just did with another translucent label. Thing is translucent is not transparent. That's why we cannot see through it. And that's also why this renders well and works better than cloudy plastic, in case you were curious. This translucent, we can make it just a little brighter. Maybe take this up to about uh, 80 or 85 maybe. Now, what we really wanna do is mask out part of this translucent label, and we can use our color map to do so. We need to somehow get it to target these black items and say wherever these black items are, or these black pixels, only show this translucent label. We're gonna do this with another color to number. So right click, go to utilities, color to number. We're gonna take our color map into our color to number input, hit C to preview. Color to number turns everything grayscale, but it also gives us a lot of control over those values. So what we wanna do is take the input to, because that represents the lighter values within this texture. 
and we want to reduce it so that we can uh, make everything above a 0.1 or a really dark gray pure white. So now we have this black and white mask, but it's the wrong way. We actually want the black parts to be white and the white parts to be black. We can take our output from and our output to, and by switching these values, we invert this mask as well. And the reason this is gonna work is because where white is equal to one, black is equal to zero. If we plug this into opacity for translucent, white will be 100% opaque, meaning you're gonna see it, and black will be 0% opaque or transparent, making the translucent label disappear. So if we plug that into the opacity channel, there you go. Looking pretty cool. Now, for those of you who wanna take this one step further, there are times where you're gonna to need to have a printed graphic on these buttons, and I got you covered. So to do that, we're gonna right click, grab a material called plastic, double click on it. Let's set its color to something like 5%. Uh, see to preview, there you go. We're going to set the roughness to 0.3, make it really, really matte and get out of that preview and plug it in as a label on top of, you guessed it, everything once again. Now what we need to do is simply mask away this printed uh, black ink, I guess, or whatever it is. So grab your color blocks graphic, the other project file I included. Before you plug it in, see to preview, let's map it correctly. We need to go to planar and let's move the texture. And it looks like it's um, way too big for some reason. Change the size under DPI to 300. There we go. Grab that green circle, hold shift and rotate into place. Should look something like that. Get out of preview with C and plug that into the opacity of our plastic. And there you go. There you go. Uh, we have made a pretty cool little thing. Now, I don't wanna toot my own horn here, but this is a pretty neat material graph setup for a number of reasons. First of all, you can easily take the color adjust node and change all the colors we just put in there right away by just dragging that hue slider. You could even animate that if you wanted to, since this hue slider has an input for a texture. You could use a color fade or a curve fade. What I've done in the past for work is I have, instead of loading a single texture, I've loaded a video map. And if you haven't seen or experienced video maps, I'll link that up as well. Be sure to watch that video you could replace this single image with a image sequence, which would play an animation on these buttons, believe it or not. And it even works for uh, buttons that turn on and off because we have built into this material, anything within the texture that is black is seen as turned off and it will always display this translucent button as if it didn't have a light behind it. I, I mean, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm a nerd about this, but I think this is a super good Super cool material, it's very flexible. I think I'll stop talking about it now, but hopefully for those of you with more experience, you'll learn something new. For those of you with less experience, be sure to check out the Material Graph Monday series like I mentioned. It'll kind of ease you into this a little bit. And uh, until next time, guys, happy rendering.